Teresa Rowe. To find out more about Shape by Faith and Teresa Rowe, please visit shapebyfaith.com or visit the YouTube channel, Facebook, or Instagram. And now, here is Teresa Rowe. Welcome to Shape by Faith, where we shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. My guest today is Becky Barnhart. She's an Owensboro native, and she's been the executive director of the Senior Community Center since November 2020. Becky's a graduate of the Owensboro High School and Western Kentucky University, and she has 35-plus years career in communications, marketing, fundraising, and leadership, which includes positions in Kentucky, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, and, wow, Europe. From 2001 to 2015, she served with Operation Mobilization, a global missions organization based in Hungary, Austria, England, and Atlanta. From 2011 to 2015, she held a senior global role as OM's International Communication and Marketing Director. Becky moved home, and we're so glad, to Owensboro, Kentucky at the end of 2015, primarily to be closer to her sister's grandkids, the loves of her life. She loves her role at the Senior Center as an advocate, friend, and since May, I love this, a full-fledged member. Welcome to Shape by Faith, Becky. Oh, thank you so much, Teresa. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, I want to talk about what you're doing over there at the Senior Community Center and, um, Seniors are so important. Right. You know they are. So, um, Absolutely. Why, are, why are you so passionate about helping seniors and what led to your role as the executive director? Well, it, it really traces back to um, my mother, my late mother who passed away in 2014. Um, she, she, re- she worked in, uh, until she was 83 and retired at 83 and uh, was kind of floundering to know what to do after retirement. And so my two of my older sisters dragged her down to the senior center, the Monday center, kicking and screaming because she didn't want to hang out with those old people. <laughs> and, uh, and and we're like, hey, lady, you're 84. But, um, mm-hmm. uh, but the impact that the place had on her life and subsequently our lives as her kids, we knew she had a place to go. She could. She volunteered here and uh, helped with calling calling shut-ins and calling homebound seniors. Um, but then she got involved and started eating lunch and having, you know, doing some of the activities. But it just made it just provided purpose for her life in the last years of her life. And um, so when the position came open, I I just thought I want to I want to give it a try because I know how important it was for her and and like I said and for us as her kids to know that there was a place that she could go. And that's a, it's a perfect position for you with your mother. Um, You know, she experienced it there and wow, 83 years old, she retired at 83. And, you know, some people think at 60 or whatever, at 65. (laughs) And uh, she's just a testimony to how we should live our lives. She really is. Um, Yeah, she really was. I I make this joke. um, Someone asked me when I first started, here if I was prepared to deal with all these seniors. And I said, if if you had known my mother, it was like Olympic level training the last 10 years of her life to, to <laughs> get me to this point. So, um, so yeah, I, I feel very passionate about seniors. Well, I, I think people have maybe a skewed perception or an idea uh, of what it is to be a senior, because I think Becky, I don't know if you'd agree with me or not, but times have changed so much that yeah. people have become very active, even grandparenting yeah. and, and being an aunt and uncle. It, it's wholly different than it used to be, let's say, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. And um I've even seen seniors in my own fitness classes. I mean, some are in their 80s and they're yeah. very active and they're volunteering. Oh. and you know, I mean, it's not like, oh, I'm at a certain age and I'm going to quit. You know, right. I'm going to turn it all in. Yeah, Absolutely. it's not like that. And I, I just ran into no. a friend the other night and she's a business owner in our community. And she said, I just turned 70. I don't feel 70. I don't know what 70 is supposed to feel like. I said, 
I don't, I don't think it's supposed to feel like anything in particular. Just keep going strong. So exactly, um, exactly. Yeah. So I, you know, when people think about seniors, I think, oh, old. Well, what does that mean? Because everyone is aging. You know, you you can't right. get past that. So right. everyone's going to be one thing we all have in common. That's right. Uh, let's talk about um, who the center serves and, and what age. I mean, is there a certain age to be there? Well, we classify uh, seniors as 60 and older. So that's why I said <clears throat> that in May uh, I turned 60 and became a full-fledged um, card-carrying member of the Senior Center. So, um, And that's that's just through the Older Americans Act, the federal mandate that started all of this back in the 60s. So, so it's 60 and older. Anybody 60 and older can come. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't card people, do you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sometimes we do have to ask for, uh, you know, driver's license just to to ensure that they're uh, they are sixty. Because that is so fun. Yeah. No, you can. And people look so much younger now, especially yeah. if they stay active. So, Absolutely. how many people does this center serve in a year's time? Well, in here at the at our location on West Second Street, we're serving about a thousand plus uh, in the course of a year through all the different activities. And then we are, we're the Meals on Wheels provider for Davis County. So we serve another 500 plus through, uh, through that program. So we have about 3,000 mem, well, they're not members. They don't pay a membership fee, but 3,000 seniors on our roll and, and we're serving about half of those. Wow, that's a, that's a lot. So yeah. obviously you have to have a really great staff in place, yes. people that are passionate. You know, yes. about other people. So how would you describe your staff? Oh, I, I think that they have a servant's heart. I mean, it, when you work in a nonprofit, you have to have a servant's heart and, <clears throat> and a real commitment and a dedication to those that you're serving. Um, but our folks are, I, I mean, I've said this before, but our meals on wheels drivers, I think are some of the unsung heroes in this community, um, that, they just, it's a hard job. I mean, it's physically hard of delivering every day. And, you know, when it's raining, when it's hot out there, you know, they're doing it to make sure our folks get their meals. So big hearted, dedicated servants. That's who, who love seniors. Mm-hmm. It sounds like possibly, um, the Chick-fil-A staff are <laughs> all nice, <laughs> personable. <laughs> <laughs> Have a That's good right. day. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, when you're in, when you, when you have, when you work in a nonprofit and a ministry, you ha- you have to be passionate about it and you have to have a heart for it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, you've hosted a lot of special events since we you've come have, on board. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm watching on Facebook and you've got all these events, all these, fun things going on. So yeah. why don't you share some of the recent events you had and, and what they were like? Well, I mean, just on Friday um, or recently, right before Derby Day, we had a Kentucky Derby party uh, that was sponsored and organized by the seniors through our advisory council. And we had a great meal and we had a hat parade and and they even had we even had fun horse races like with fly swatters moving from table to table and little <laughs> stick stick horses. There was a race. Um, and we're, we've been hosting a lot of, we've had two dances already this year. We're going to have another one in June. And that is just drawing more and more people into the center. Um, we, we did, one of the funnest things we did recently <clears throat> was partner with the pickleball club, the River City Pickleball Club. And they came in and did a little big, beginner's clinic. And I asked people to sign up, and we had seven people sign up beforehand, but 26 people showed up for it. So, oh my, it was crazy. So, I, you know, we have a lot going on during the week, but when we have these special events like meals or dinners, parties, um, you know, something extra special, it, it we we always have a great turnout, and it's really it's just fun. I mean, it's just pe- you know, people are happy. We're and and we're interacting and socializing and engaging with each other. So those are some of the big things that we've done. We had a St. Patty's Day uh, dance and a Valentine's dance and dinner. And so it was just great fun. It sounds like it. Okay, let's take a real quick break. We'll be back with more Shape by Faith. Everyone stay tuned. 
Ernie Johnson and Charles Barkley welcoming you back to Susan's Cubicle here in Accounts Payable. What an afternoon of non-stop bookkeeping action, Charles. Are you kidding me? She set herself a reminder to get out of that chair and move. That's a smart use of a timeout. She's somehow still reading her emails while getting her heart rate up and moving her muscles. Healthy habits that could lower your risk of cancer. Uh-oh, it's Karen from the IT department. This is a wrinkle no one saw coming. She means well, but she just derailed the yoga class down an accounts receivable. There she goes with one of her usual distractions. But Susan just tosses her a no-look wave. That's a crazy move. Let's watch that again. She's stretching, and there's the effortless side wave. Susan's putting on a clinic. Susan from Accounts Payable, dominating. Just get moving. It helps in the prevention of so many cancers. Stand up to cancer and Optum want to help you reduce your risk for cancer. Visit TakeAHealthyStand.org. Welcome back to Shape by Faith. My guest today is Becky Barnhart, and she is the executive director of the Senior Community Center. And, Becky, you were just talking about some of the special events that you recently had that sound like so much fun. So let's talk about your... um you know, your weekly events, things that are planned right. and, you know, that people can count on every single week. So why don't you talk about those? Yeah, we, we I think people will probably be surprised with how much we have going on. But, um, I mean, we provide lunch and ev- every day here at the Senior Center at 1130. And, again, that's for anybody 16 over. But classes, we have um, low-impact exercise class. It's actually being taught by two of our seniors. One of them is 90, Teresa. Oh, wow. She's 90 years old, and she teaches the low-impact class, and that class is booming. I mean, wow. it, it's tripled in the last few Wait months. Wait a minute. You said she's 90 years old? 90. 90. Yes. I want to meet her. <laughs> she's awesome. She's awesome. And and I said and I said to her when she told me, I said, you don't look 90. And then it started, you know, like you said earlier, like, well, what's, what is 90 supposed to look like? What's 70 <laughs> supposed to look like? Well, our 90-year-old is teaching low-impact exercise class once a wow, week. Oh, so. that is so amazing. I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, I, it's I, a I great class. Her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we have uh, we have a group of women that play cards. We started a men's card group. I guess they got jealous that they didn't mm. have anything. Um, we have <laughs> craft classes. And, it, and when I say class, it's a group of folks that just get together and work on their crafts together they're not necessarily working on a project or you know they help each other but it's it's more for that socialization um we have yoga club we have a mat yoga and a chair yoga silver sneakers bingo um we have uh, a support group line dancing we offer computer classes and phone classes so there's a lot going on during the week every day um for different events and activities. Wow. I did not realize you had that much going on. That's a lot. Is there a cost for the activities? Um, nothing. There's. We can't require a payment. We, everything we offer is there's a suggested donation towards it. You know, mm-hmm. most of the events are like a $1.50 suggested donation. But, again, nobody's turned away for lack of payment. It's so. Right. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so your focus on health and exercise, obviously it's there because you're offering a lot of fitness classes. Um, Okay. Um, As far as nutrition or anything like that, do you ever have special events where you have someone come in? And I'm sure you have different speakers throughout the community. We do. And, and, I mean, we, like I said, with all the different, we have an exercise class. We offer an exercise class every day. So there's that opportunity. Um, we have a lay, one of our seniors has, has started a, he calls it a talk it out support group. And he, and he started it after we reopened for COVID just for people to talk about their experiences during COVID. But we also have, um, we'll do health resource fairs, um, blood pressure clinics. We have free hearing testing coming in. Um, and we will, but we partner with different organizations, you know, to provide those one-off or one or two-off um, sessions on aging or dementia, Alzheimer's, you know, um, mental health, those type of things. So we, we try to provide all of, you know, the whole mind, body, and soul experience. It sounds like you do. So how many are you, you reaching through the different activities? We, we're we averaging about 120 plus a day um, that are coming here to the senior center. 
um, and another 250 or so through the Meals on Wheels program. So um, it that's the average. Like today, we had a record crowd today for several of our events. So our numbers are growing, and that's been very exciting. So um, if you ask me this question in six months, I hope to tell you it's that's a higher number. Mike, you've got 500 coming through the door. 120 is a lot, Becky. It is, it is a lot. And I think people, I think, I think, I think people are surprised by that. You know, um, we do have some folks that are here every day that we, we have the billiards room, you know, which is the local, let's solve the world's problem, uh, <laughs> spot, right? And, um, and, and that, when I first started, when we first reopened, we had, there's like six tables and maybe two or three were used. Now all of them are used. I mean, they're just, it, the billiards room is filled all day. And, wow. um, and we've seen a lot of growth there. So people come, you know, every day for lunch or to play pool or to play cards or to we have a reading area, a library, a TV room. And, you know, it's it's just the socialization aspect, too. I didn't realize you had a library. That's pretty. That's pretty. It's amazing. A, you know, it's a small little uh, mm-hmm. um, we have one room and we have a big we have a TV and a couch and puzzles and some games. And, and then we have some. Nice chairs and comfortable spaces and uh, and bookcases and yeah they can come in. Don't you also or, have a little shop in there? We do. We have the pin cushion gift <laughs> shop, which um, is is sourced by primarily seniors making you know handmade crafts. And we're open every morning. We have some volunteers that that uh, have led that effort for years, and a couple of women that started it and worked hard hard for years, Miss Thelma and Miss Lucy. Um, and uh, so we're seeing more more traction there. We actually participated in Shop Local <laughs> on, oh, wow. on the Christmas with the Chamber uh, through the pincushion. So, yeah, I've been, I, I love to shop, Becky. I, I just, and we've got a lot of grandkids. So I was in there, I think it was probably a few years ago. I was in there with Randy yeah. Lanham and we did a, through Project Volunteer, um, we filmed there. Um, but that pin cushion gift shop, I mean, she, yeah. they make doll clothes. I mean, Barbie clothes, doll clothes, yeah. all sorts of things. It was really neat. So what, yeah, what the, are, the, oh, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say the, the, especially around Christmas time, we, we sell a lot of the Barbie clothes and the doll clothes, big, big hits. Yeah. And you can't find things like that. You can't buy things like that in a store. There is no way the well, quality and they're hand, they're handmade and they're inexpensive. You know, and it's it's a consignment shop, but like the 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 folks that the they put their stuff in there and they get a percentage and we get a little percentage, you know. Mm, so okay, um, so it's just it's a, a great way to it provides a little income here and and provides a little income for them as well. That's right. So give us your hours of operation when you're open. Um, from nine to twelve, Monday through Friday. Okay. Right. Th- All right. Monday through Friday, nine to twelve. Okay. So you were talking about Meals on Wheels, which is a huge program. Yeah. You're fi- feeding so many people. So how many sites do you deliver to, and how many people are benefiting from this program? Well, we there's actually five what we call nutrition sites in Davis County. We're the biggest one, of course, at the Senior uh, Center on West Second. But Whitesville Trinity or the Whitesville Community Center has one. Um, uh, Roosevelt too. We deliver meals to, to Roosevelt too. Park Regency, which is right behind the mall. It's mm-hmm. an apartment. And then, um, Adams Village. They have a community center and, uh, and we deliver food there. And then, so there's five different nutrition sites and then we deliver to another 250 to 300 folks, you know, in their homes on top, on top of that. Wow. How do you get all that together? That's a huge operation. It's a big, it's a big operation. And, wow. but it's, it, but Teresa, during COVID, um, you know, the center was closed for 15 months because of COVID, but we were still delivering meals. And then there was anyone 16 older could get a meal. There was no restrictions, no criteria. And so we were, when I came in, we were delivering right around 600 meals a day. Oh, um, wow. and, and it was, and so it was an, an uh, process for sure we've got it down to a fine science the like again the meals on wheels driver and david tucker who's the manager they just do a great job and we get the food from canteen five star and they bring it to us and then we package it up and put it in the carts or the 
coolers and the drivers take off and and um uh, it's it's seamless at this point but it's it it's amazing work that they do wow and and to think that you delivered to that many homes and then those sites i mean that's that's a lot how how many days a week do you do that five days a week we deliver wow. here uh, five, monday through friday now some of the nutrition sites aren't open every day um so um like adams village is only open we deliver there three times a day, three times a week and park regency four times a week. So it just varies depending on the location, but we're, but we deliver to homes, you know, the home delivered meals are every day, Monday through Friday. That's incredible. All right, let's take another quick break. We'll be back with more Shape by Faith. Using gas to heat our homes, cook our meals, or dry our clothes can be dangerous to our health, especially for kids. But we have the technology to transition the country's infrastructure to clean energy. By encouraging local government and state agencies to electrify buildings instead of using dirty gas, we can clean up a public health crisis in our housing and protect the climate. My name is Matt Vespa. I'm a senior attorney at Earth Justice, and I'm going to court to fight for clean energy. Until safe, affordable, clean energy is an option in every home, I will never rest. Earth Justice is a national legal nonprofit defending the environment and people's health. Earth Justice is fighting to save lives, protect our climate, and strengthen our economy through the shift to zero emissions. If clean air matters to you, visit us at earthjustice.org. Earth Justice, because the earth needs a good lawyer. Prescription opioids can be addictive and dangerous. I was given a prescription opioid pain medication, and within only a few months, I was completely addicted. I lost everything. I had to leave school and stop playing sports in college, and I started to watch my life slip away. I want people to know that these drugs are addictive. One prescription can be all it takes to lose everything. Prescription opioids. It only takes a little to lose a lot. Visit cdc.gov slash rxawareness. Welcome back to Shape by Faith. Becky Barnhart, oh gosh, you do so much at the Senior Community Center. You're the executive director, and um, you've been telling me about the special events, the activities, Meals on Wheels, and you have a transportation service. Is that right? We do. We have a, um, we have a driver. We have a, a, a transit van that's handicapped accessible. We can transport people in wheelchairs um, to doctor's appointments, grocery store, any appointment they need. Um, the medical appointments take priority. They just got to call the senior center at uh, 270-687-4640. We ask for 48 hours notice, um, and we just charge $1.50 per trip, so $3 round trip. But we, again, 60 and older, and uh, we can take them anywhere within Davis County. Okay, so do they have to be at the senior community center? No, no, no. We we go and pick them up at their house and take them to appointments. And, and we pick up a lot of folks and bring them to the senior center for activities and events and then take them home. So That is amazing. Okay. Is. There, is there a cost involved with that? Well, again, it's it, a suggested donation of $1.50 per leg. So if it, if you come to the senior center and back, it's suggested $3. I mean, that's like a super Uber service. <laughs> It is. <laughs> I mean, that is incredible. I did not realize, Becky, you guys did that. Um, so, yeah, we, okay. So you, you have to call a day in advance at least. And at least take- we, we really asked for 48 hours notice. Okay. So, okay. Um, and, and like I said, the medical appointments take priority, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we take people to Kroger or Walmart, you know, Aldi, uh, whatever they, whatever's needed. That is incredible. Okay. Let's talk about funding. How is the center funded? Well, I, I think people, a lot of people may not realize, but we're, we're federally mandated. Every county in, in Kentucky has to have a central focal point for a senior center through the Older Americans Act. So we're federal, most, the majority of our funds are federal and state through our contract with Brad. And we've held, held that contract since 1997. We're also um, a quasi city agency and we're very grateful for the city support and the county support that we get. And then, you know, donations. Uh, individuals, businesses, and we, we host fundraisers like um, every other nonprofit. Mm-hmm. But that's how we're funded. Okay. So let's talk about volunteers. I know you have yeah. to have some volunteers there. 
<laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We have about 30 volunteers right now that that help out with a variety of 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 things. And honestly, I feel like if there's anybody who has a desire to volunteer, we have we have that need, <laughs> whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we we need people to help us call homebound seniors or go visit them. We you know we we have our we have a pet meals on wheels program that I don't think a lot of people are aware of, and so we need volunteers to package up the pet food. And All right, hold on. Out. Did you say pet? Pet. pet. Seriously? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow, I did we, not know that. We received a grant from Meals on Wheels America about a year and a half ago to start a pet assistance program, wow. and we're one of the first senior centers in the area, tri-state area, um, and so we. We and we accept we now accept a lot of donations of pet food and supplies and so it's it's for our Meals on Wheels clients because they find that you know folks will feed their animals before they'll feed themselves. You're right. So we want to keep the you know seniors healthy and keep them at home and so this is one way to do that because their pets are such important companions and mm-hmm. important you know critical to yeah, their health. Absolutely, and they're part of their yeah. family. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Wow, that is really neat. Okay, I yeah. know you've got to have some incredible stories, some inspirational stories. So what would you like to share? Well, I think people just need to realize that or that the Seeker Center is just a lifeline for so many people. We have we are we have grown a lot by people that have moved to Owensboro because their kids are here and their grandkids and you know, so the, and it's the first place they look up like is there a senior center? Um we had a woman move from <clears throat> California and um and she said to us she said this place is so much nicer than our senior center back home and I you know that um and that just meant so much to me you know um we have we have one woman she was here for the dance for one of the dances I think it was the St. Patrick's Day dance and she said to me she said I went to bed with a smile on my face and I woke up with a smile on my face oh and that um you know that just that's what keeps us going, you know, but um, we're, we're just fortunate to, to come into contact with a lot of wonderful, wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And everybody here has a story. Yes. Yes. You know, and people could learn so much if they would just listen uh, to people that are older and wiser than them and just honor them. Funny that you, funny that you would mention that because we have partnered with OCTC with one of their developmental psychology classes for two different semesters and matched seniors with students mm. and they go through a life and review project and put together the students put together a scrapbook for the senior and the she, senior is their, you know, their guinea pig. They ask, they answer all these questions and it is such a powerful um, project and, and we're looking to restart it in the fall, but it, that's been incredible for both staff, the seniors and the students. It's just been a great project. Absolutely. I think, you know, um, that needs to go on everywhere, yeah, even absolutely. in the elementary schools, middle schools. Okay, we, we only have like 30 seconds, but what's your goal or vision for the Senior Center moving forward? I, I think we just want to keep growing and adapting to the deeds and, you know, the, the demographic of seniors is the fastest growing demographic in the country. So we want to keep providing different activities and events that are going to meet the needs of the seniors. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you are. Wow. Okay. So give us a phone number again, um, yeah. Becky. Yes. Uh, 270-687-4640. Okay. And, well, oh, go ahead. And, and the I was address? just going to say that we're, uh, the office is open like eight, eight to three thirty. Eight to three thirty. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to have you come back on possibly in the fall and give us an update. You are doing so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Teresa. Absolutely. And thank you for listening. I'm Teresa Rowe. Everyone have a blessed day. Bye. Thank you for listening to Shape by Faith with Teresa Rowe. Remember to visit shapebyfaith.com to find out more about workouts, the TV show, podcast, blogs, Shape by Faith products, and much more. From the cabinet doors and more studio, this is W. Mike Rowe here with a radical idea. If you want to see more companies make more things in this country, buy more things from more companies who make things in this country. I refer in this case to the incredible t-shirts, sweatshirts, blue jeans, and more made by my friends at American Giant. 
everything American Giant makes is made in the United States. And right now, you can take 20% off your first order at American-Giant.com slash Mike. That's American-Giant.com slash Mike. 